Hi, in this video lecture, I'm going to provide an introduction about cyber-physical systems modeling. As I already told you about, the most important question to ask ourselves is what are embedded systems? Embedded systems can be seen as computers whose job is not primarily information processing, but rather they are designed to interact with physical processes. We did talk about that already, but they do have a few attributes such as they are application specific, they are constrained in resources, the software needs to run forever. And most importantly, they are interconnected with physical processes through sensors and actuators. So a broader view of looking at these computers, these embedded systems, is to talk about cyber physical system, a system that does integrate both a cyber, a computer component, and a physical component. Let's go through a quick example. How would you actually design a pacemaker for the heart? Well, to understand that question, you will need to look at the big general function of a cyber-physical system, which are sense, act, and think. You will have a sensor that gets information into a computer that needs to make a decision and send information to an actuator where you will actually be able to act on a physical quantity. And the question you need to ask is how to properly act if we don't actually know how to exploit the data that we sense. And how to prove that a system properly answers a given stimulus. I would go beyond just the engineering questions. That's an actual engineering responsibility. If you consider that uh, a study from 2007 showed that more than 30,000 deaths and more than 600,000 injuries were actually due to medical devices and that 8% of them are coming to software, you really need to think twice when you implement a system and ask yourself if you have the right implementation. So, in order to solve these big questions, modeling will come into the play. And um, let's look at the cyber-physical design problem. In a traditional embedded system, you will have your embedded software that is uh, a software running on a small computer and your traditional goal is to actually optimize the software to cope with the limited resources and performance. In a cyber-physical system, you will include also computation, networking, integration with physical processes and now the big technical challenge is to actually deal with time dynamics, concurrency of the network, how to deal with the network, the physical system, and so on and so forth. And things are becoming more and more complex. You need to think across the abstraction layers. You will now implement a control algorithm that will need a solid understanding of your computer arithmetic. At the same time, if you're looking to real-time software, uh, you will need to understand the processor features also to guarantee your real-time components. Uh, you will also need to understand the multi-threaded component of your software and guarantee that your software is not going to stall. How can you do that? Well, one of the best options is to use model-based design. In model-based design, you will actually model the process that you're trying to deal with in order to gain a deeper understanding of your system and understanding also its limitation and how you can act on that. The model is going to specify what your system is supposed to do. Then you will actually be able to do the actual design, so that's the traditional embedded system view. And you will do a structure creation of your artifact. Um, you will implement your system following what the system is supposed to do. That will include your optimizations. And finally, you will be able to analyze the behavior of your actual design to guarantee that it is going to work correctly compared to your initial model. So that brings in a very important um, um, notion, which is the notion of um, functional specifications. Function specification that you will be able to simulate in order to show that the behavior of your system and you will be able to simulate the final system against your set of specifications. So specifications did evolve 
in the past uh, decade or so into just more traditional paperwork type of uh, data into more like computer code and model that will be able to be run by the designer to understand the full dynamics of the system. So models are abstractions of the system dynamics, meaning that how things do change over time. And there are multiple examples of models. You might uh, decide to model physical phenomena using differential equations. You might want to model um, control systems using time domain modeling, um, Laplace transforms, and so on and so forth. You might want to model uh, model behaviors, so discrete models using finite state machines, hybrid automata, that kind of things. And you might also want to model other types of, um, of systems. In the context of this class, we're going to look at these uh, three components, differential equations, time domain modeling, as well as finite state machines. So if we revisit the notion of model-based design, what your job will be will be to actually create a mathematical model that contains all the part of your embedded system. The physical world, if we go through the example of our DC motor system, how the motor behaves, that will include the control system, the software environment, the software component, the hardware platform. How can you extract the behavior, the mathematical equations of your um, DC motor uh, interface, your edge bridge, for instance, and then have a system that you can fully simulate to guarantee that it's going to work as per the specifications. And then you will do the actual implementation from the model. The coming lab, is actually going to help you understand how you could model things to understand how the behavior of the complete system should be and how further you can implement this system on your microcontroller based on this model. I'd like also to talk about the importance of specifications. Uh, they are fundamental to good engineering practices and I'd like to cite a couple of uh, great scientists um, where a design without specification cannot be right or wrong, it can only be surprising. Obviously, you will always have a gap between the model and the reality. But while you try to close this gap and make your models as close as possible to the actual physical phenomenon, the model is still very relevant. Let's go through another um, very nice citation. You will never strike oil by drilling through the map. Yes, for sure but that does not in any way diminish the value of the map. 